Hello YouTube. Uh, I'm about to start a new project, uh, which uh, is a power uh, generator inverter station uh, with a battery bank um, uh, and everything. And it starts with an engine. Uh, so I purchased this engine off eBay. It's a 6.5 horsepower Honda clone. Um, this is one of the cheaper ones. This is branded as, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Eberth or something like that. Um, it's a 20 millimeter shaft um, version. It's a straight shaft and it has a key um, for the shaft. It's also the uh, the electric start version. Um, doesn't say that anywhere here, but it's the electric uh, starter version. Um, and it does tell us that it weighs 17.5 kilos from the box. It's definitely quite heavy. Um, let's get it open. Um, it had straps already, which, um, so it's quite securely packed. Um, I've already cut them off. Um, and let's cut the rest of this thing open. So, uh, Okay, so we've got two layers of cardboard, that's good. Uh, okay, I see some polystyrene and some uh, goodies in there. So it looks like this polystyrene just lifts off. There we go. Revealing the top of the motor. Um, have a look at what we've got here so this is a uh, key spark plug um, tool a small screwdriver and what looks like the instruction manual uh, two keys sorry um, for the starter motor uh, we've got a little box here which is quite heavy so I assume this is the battery and it is the battery um, sealed uh, lead acid um, was it seven amp hours or something perhaps yeah I think it is uh, Chinese duic or luic basically unbranded um, essentially battery standby 4.13.5 uh, volts to 30.9 use 1450 to 1490 standard stuff um, the terminals do have um, uh, some PVC sort of tube uh, to protect them, but one is slightly bent, so it's not completely ruined. It will work fine. Um, set that to one side. Uh, this is sealed, so it won't leak, um, which is good. Uh, right, now I'm going to try and lift this out. Try and not pick it up somewhere <laughs> that may give. Uh, so this is the starter motor I can feel, and uh, okay, that's the carb I think, and that's the exhaust. So I'll lift it by the starter motor and the exhaust. And this is the unit itself. Uh, there is a bottom half of the uh, the polystyrene uh, form, so that's quite good, although it's broken. And there's a small amount of what looks like some kind of fluid that might have escaped a little bit, but uh, overall, things like uh, seems like it's taken the the impact very well. Ah, here we go. And this this inside box actually shows the specs of this motor. So. This is the model number, uh, bore and stroke, uh, shaft size 19.5, well that's not right, it's actually a twen uh, 20, I think, uh, I guess they just use the same box for all of them, uh, although that would suggest it's a 20 mil shaft version, so I don't actually know, I uh, don't know what they're playing at here, but... 196cc, just under 200, 8.5 to 1 compression ratio. Um, that's fairly respectable. Um, I guess it's an air-cooled uh, engine, so 
that's probably the highest um, you they're willing to go um, without it um, pre-ignite uh, pre-ignition or detonation issues or anything like that so um, that's cool. Uh, it also says it's a recoil start engine, uh, which it is, but it does actually have a starter motor as well and the appropriate wiring. Fuel tank 3.6 litres, which is a little bit on the small side actually. Um, I'm expecting this to consume about an, a litre an hour at um, most of its um, capacity, uh, output capacity. Uh, 0.6 litres of uh, oil, which is acceptable. It's all pretty standard. Uh, all of these engines are basically clones of the very popular Honda engines. Um, and I'm hoping this is going to last me a little while. Um, not expecting miracles, uh, but we shall see. Um, so let's have a look at the, uh, the engine, the motor itself. Uh, where's the bottom of this? Okay, so this is... This is the guy. Uh, right. First, let's have a look at the electronics. Uh, this panel seems to be a little bit bent, uh, but actually it doesn't look like it would line up. It doesn't look like we could unbend it uh, because it actually hits the back of the starter mode or the front, sorry. Uh, so I guess that's uh, how it is, um, which is fine, whatever. Uh, circuit protector, not sure. Engine switch, uh, three states off, run, which is sort of enabled, and then you twist it further to make it, to engage the starter motor. Um, recoil and start for backup. Uh, does, is, turning over I think I just hit the compression cycle there but turning over it's that's good good start um, along the same side here uh, we've got the carb and we've got the fuel on off switch I guess I guess that's what it is uh, came on the on position strangely um, choke and we've got the just a manual um, RPM lever here. Sorry if, I, if my head is in the way of all of this. Um, and we have on this side the uh, the rocket cover, um, carburetor spark plug here, which is nicely protected from the elements actually and that just disconnects quite easily um, there is an interesting mark on the top of the spark plug here uh, looks like some kind of mechanical um, mark but certainly doesn't look damaged so uh, I'll assume that's fine pop that back on uh, air filter housing uh, looks like this comes apart uh, which is fine aha yes yeah, so um, uh, the air travels comes in through the sides through the bottom and is then filtered and sucked in through the middle and there's a sort of a rubber sort of a cheap feeling rubber gasket to seal that but it seems like it would do the job. Uh, how was this assembled? God, I can't even put it back together. I think that's just for the filler, for the foam element to stop from fall, stop it from falling out. Uh, we've got some blue peely off tape. Uh, it's funny why they. It's funny how they uh, they bothered about that, to be honest. Um, protecting the shiny bits. Uh, this seems to be very important. Uh, this I'm just going to get rid of. I don't need that. It's actually a fire hazard itself, uh, I imagine. 
Right, so do this later. Uh, here we've got the exhaust, uh, the little muffler, and uh, this is the output of the muffler here. Um, I'm going to just quickly grab my verniers and measure the um, the diameter of the pipe that leaves the uh, the block. For any of you out there who are interested in putting your own exhaust on it, um, the size of this tube is quite important um, unless you are planning on uh, making your own flange and using your own size pipe. So uh, in one dimension it's 22.2 or 22.3 millimeters which is uh, 0.2 nine or thereabouts inches OD uh, and in the other dimension it's, it's sort of mandrel bent, bent so it's a little bit squished and the other dimension is 21.8 basically uh, which is 0.85 inches um, so I guess I don't know what's the OD it seems to be pretty round near the top of the uh, body of the muffler here so let's measure that 21.73 22.2 so let's say 22 millimeters uh, which is about 0.88 inches in decimal inches um, so not quite an inch uh, hmm okay be interesting trying to figure out how to uh, get my flex pipe on there but put that to one side um, on the front here we've got obviously the uh, the crankshaft uh, the output shaft uh, 20 mil key no actual screw here but I guess it's just a, a metric a common ah I've got a key in here um, but no um, screw no machine screw uh, or bolt to actually secure a pulley onto here um, I guess it's probably looks like an M8 size thread here so that should be fairly easy uh, two oil uh, two oil uh, caps here uh, this machine is empty uh, uh, we've got a meter a level meter here high low probably can't see that but it says H and it says L separated by about 20 millimeters I imagine something like that um, um, what else observations uh, the gasket between the crankcase cover and the actual block is uh, not a silicone gasket, it's actually a sort of a paper fiberglass type gasket, I guess. Um, which, uh, fine, uh, I guess. Um, and I guess that's it for this side. Let's move on to this side. We've got a uh, starter motor. Starter motor solenoid? No, that's a relay. That's a relay. Um, so there is no solenoid, I guess. Um, and I imagine we've got a couple of terminals here, red and black. And I imagine these just connect to the battery. Um, yeah, they do indeed. Uh, they have a that looks like a six millimeter hole. Um, again, no six mil screws here to attach that together. Um, but that is fine. Uh, pretty well tied up, uh, covered up nicely. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, well, I guess on this side, we've got the, um, the backup recoil star, I guess, which I already mentioned. So, um, that's pretty much it mechanically. Um, I'm going to. Oh, okay, nice little fuel filter here. Tank is empty. Doesn't really smell like fuel, so I don't know if they have run this or not, but. Um, 
I think it needs 1030, 1030 oil. Uh, so I'm gonna put some oil in it, put some fuel in it and see if we can get it started. Um, all right. Right, so I'm gonna try and uh, connect up the battery now. I measured the uh, the voltage of the battery. Um, it was quite low to be honest, uh, but we'll see. Maybe it will just about work. So I've just got some M5 terminals here. Sorry, screws here. Should be just fine. I filled it with um, just a little bit more than uh, oil than it needs, uh, which is 0.6 liters. Uh, and also a little bit of fuel just to get us started. Okay, seems to be ready. Let's give this a go. Fuel is on. Uh, I'm not actually sure which way the choke is. Let's have it on half. Guys. It's not actually very cold, so it's happy uh, on half choke at the moment. And that's idle. Oh, it's actually surprisingly quiet. I thought it'd be a lot lot noisier. Um, here we go, it seems to be running. That's great. <laughs> 